Hey guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm doing a little bit of a chattier video. I'm gonna be going through five things postpartum that I wish somebody would have told me. And I've kind of been keeping track of these things on my phone since my daughter was born, just adding them into my notes um, of just things that I wasn't prepared for or things that I wish somebody would have told me when I was in that really hard postpartum stage and I was struggling a lot. I'm still postpartum, I'm still learning and figuring everything out day by day, but the beginning was definitely the hardest for me and definitely when I needed the most reassurance. So the first thing I have that I wish somebody would have told me postpartum is it's okay if your baby cries and it does not mean that you are failing. And this is something that I still remind myself of day to day because it's really easy to get just super anxious when your baby's crying, especially in the beginning when you don't know what they want. You haven't really learned to them yet, so you don't know what's wrong. And it can kind of just feel like you're not doing a good job. At least that's how I felt. And I've learned throughout this process that sometimes babies just cry. And it doesn't necessarily mean that anything's wrong, especially if you go through that list. And you know that they're fed and they're changed or they just had a nap. It could just be that your baby's crying. And that's the only way they know how to express themselves is to cry. And it does not mean that you are failing or you're doing something wrong or you're not a good mom. And I wish somebody would have told me that because I really did feel like that in the beginning and it was very stressful and anxious for me. And I still get that way sometimes and I have to just step back and take a deep breath and remind myself that I know what I'm doing and it's okay and my baby's okay. So something I wish I would have gotten a little bit more reassurance on. The second thing that I have is you might not sleep when your baby sleeps. And this one was huge for me. I remember when I was pregnant and when I first had the baby in the hospital, everybody told me, sleep when the baby sleeps. It's the only time you're gonna get to sleep. And if you don't sleep, then you're never gonna sleep. And so that's what I was prepared for going into this whole process. And then I very quickly realized that it's relatively, for the most part, impossible to sleep when your baby sleep at least it was for me because when my baby was sleeping i either was pumping or i was taking a shower or i was trying to clean up or i always had something to do and then especially in the beginning my daughter had her days and nights mixed up so she only slept during the day and she did not sleep at night so during the day when she was sleeping my body wasn't used to that so I wasn't able to just go and sleep every time that she fell asleep. So that was really hard for me because I had to kind of transition my thinking a little bit. And I wish somebody would have told me like, hey, don't worry about sleeping when the baby sleeps and don't be anxious and stressed out that you're not. Just sleep when it's convenient for you and when you get a chance to. Because I was so anxious in the beginning, like, oh my God, she's sleeping and I'm not sleeping when she's sleeping now I'm never going to get any sleep and you will get sleep, but it might just not be at those specific times. So that's number two. Number three, something that I wish I would have been told is, and this is a big one, do not let anybody dictate what your postpartum experience should look like. And I think this is huge. And I think more moms need to be told this because People have a lot of opinions, especially family can have a lot of opinions, and they like to kind of push those opinions on you and kind of have the mindset that, oh, well, this worked for me, so it should be working for you. And that's not necessarily the case for everyone. And everybody's postpartum journey looks different. So something that I really struggled with and that I currently struggle with is that I'm not just bouncing back to my old life and what I used to be like and doing all the things I used to do. I know that will come with time, but right now I'm still learning how to be a mom and I'm still learning those skills and gaining that confidence. I'm not fully confident in myself as a mom yet because I'm still learning it and I'm still learning my daughter and she's still learning everything. So what's been really hard for me postpartum is people kind of being like, oh, well, you need to just get back to your regular schedule. Bring her over here and bring her there and take her with you here. And it's okay if she misses a nap time here. And it's okay if she doesn't get to bed at that time. Like, it's okay. She can adjust. And to me, that just doesn't work because I am not ready to just, oh, bring her here and bring her there and just bounce back to the way that I used to be. 
because I'm just not comfortable with it yet. And that's something that a lot of people have made me feel bad for and what I'm learning to accept and be like, okay, this is my postpartum journey, not theirs. And I don't have to mold my life into what they think it should be. I don't have to mold my experience with my daughter into what they think it should be. And I think this is huge for moms and something that would have helped me so much. If someone would have told me, hey, just do your own thing and do what works for you and don't worry about other people and what they say you should be doing or what this person thinks you should be doing because at the end of the day, it's your experience and it's going to be different for everyone and all you have to really worry about is yourself and your baby and nobody else. So that's huge and I do wish that I would have been told that earlier on. So that's a big one. All right, number four is it's okay to set rules and expectations for other people. And this was something that I struggled with too because I really didn't want to hurt other people's feelings. And I was so scared of having my own voice when it came to anything with my daughter because I just didn't want people to get offended or upset. And they did. So what I've learned throughout the process is I don't have to feel bad for having expectations when it comes to how people are around my daughter. And this is primarily for sure in the beginning stages, in the newborn stages, because you know, you may not want to have visitors right away, or you may want to have visitors right away. It's up to you. But setting those expectations for me was so hard because I didn't want to hurt people's feelings. And then, you know, for example, not having people kiss my baby because it was flu season or, hey, this is her nap time. This isn't a great time for you to come over and maybe come over a different time or a different day or no, we can't come over there for this reason or that reason. Those were so hard for me to voice because I was so scared of hurting people's feelings. And you know what? It really doesn't matter. And that's what I've learned now. This is my daughter. I grew her for nine months. I birthed her. It's okay for me to have rules and expectations when other people come to see her or when she sees other people because it's normal and it's okay. And it really doesn't matter if other people get their feelings hurt because you know what's best for you and your baby and only you and your partner or your husband can decide that. So yeah, I think that's a big thing that more moms need to hear and I would have really appreciated hearing that when I was going through that phase because you know what's best and that's what you have to remember is you know what's best for you and your baby and whatever you're comfortable with, that's what you're comfortable with and stick to that. Don't be afraid to have your own voice and don't be afraid to step on people's toes because they're offended or upset. That's saying more about them. And people really need to learn to be more accommodating to mothers because the postpartum experience and having a new baby is a whirlwind and it takes getting used to. And really, we should be so sympathetic and accommodating to what new moms are going through. So I definitely wish someone would have told me that and I wish I wouldn't have just been so afraid and felt so bad to hurt people's feelings because at the end of the day it's your baby that matters so my fifth thing and my last thing is kind of just like a random one I wanted to throw in here but I do think it's important that is prepare for postpartum hair loss I wish someone would have told me to prepare for postpartum hair loss I obviously knew it was a thing but I didn't know the extent of it i really didn't know how bad it is and it's really bad for me i'm kind of in the thick of it right now because my daughter's almost five months and my hair falls out in clumps like handfuls of clumps if i just run my hand through my hair or if my daughter grabs my hair it's just everywhere my hair is all over my house it's all over my daughter it's just a mess and i didn't know that it was going to be that bad i thought it was going to be like a few hairs here and there but no it's a lot for me If I had known that, I would have prepared better, especially when I first had my daughter. I kind of let myself go a little bit, which is, of course, fine. But, I mean, I was washing my hair like once a week. I did not do anything like any kind of hair mask, any oil, anything like that. And if I had known that this was coming, I would have been doing that. I would have done the masks and hair oils and all that stuff just to at least ease a little bit of the loss so I'm telling you guys that so if you don't know how bad it is or how bad it can get I'm sure it's different for everyone just prepare for that be ready have some I don't know some hair vitamins 
hair masks and have those on standby and just be using them even before you start losing your hair so that it can help with it and minimize it hopefully because I didn't know that. So those are my five things I wish somebody would have told me postpartum. Please comment down below if you can relate to any of these or comment down below things that you wish someone would have told you when you were postpartum. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one. Bye.